all indigenous and first people of the land and space in which we live and breathe, especially today as we recognize it is Indigenous Peoples Day. For our community at Howland College, we recognize that we are on stolen land and occupied Duwamish, Coast Salish, Muckleshoot, and Puyallup lands. We want to thank all relations and tribes today as we prepare to hold space as a community. We recognize that all of us are joining this conversation from different locations through Zoom. So we also want to, um, so let us also acknowledge the indigenous and first people of the land and space in which you currently occupy. Further, we respectfully acknowledge the enslaved people, primarily of African descent, who provided exploited labor on which this country was built with little to no recognition. Today, we are indebted to their labor and the labor of many black and brown individuals that have continued to work in the shadows for our collective benefit. And with that, I would like to pass it now on to Gio. Thank you, Maya, so much. Um, thank you so much for grounding us this morning uh, on our first program for the 11th annual LGBTQIA week here at Highland College, um, honoring the past, healing the present, querying the future. Um, good morning, everyone. I want to just say happy LGBTQIA week to you all. Um, my name is Geomark Manahan Panello. I use he, him, his pronouns, and I serve as the mentorship programs leadership advisor at the Center for Cultural Inclusive Excellence. Um, I had the honor of being the chair for the 11th annual LGBTQIA Week 2021, honoring the past, healing the present, querying the future. Um, when we were brainstorming for a theme this year, the committee wanted to connect what, we, what had happened in the past to the current situation and what our future could and should look like. Um, our theme this year looks at the struggles, the, the challenges and success of the LGBTQIA communities from across history. We have five amazing programs that will explore, highlight and celebrate the experiences of LGBTQIA communities. We know that a week isn't enough and it will never be um, to honor the lives of our LGBTQIA community, but we do hope that it is a start and you continue to do so. Um, we want you all to share what you learned from this week um, out there to your community. Before I introduce our presenter for today, I want to take this time to thank you all for being here. We appreciate your support. It does not matter whether this is your 11th year joining us or this is your first LGBTQIA week event. Um, what matters is that you are here today, you are ready to listen and learn. And I would also like to thank this year's LGBTQIA Week Planning Committee members, Amy Bergstrom, Betty Vera, Doris Martinez, Edwina Fui, Genoa Wingo, uh, Joshua Magallanes, uh, Kenton Westerfield, Maya Lennard, Robert Scribner, and Stephanie Ojeda Ponce. Um, throughout the summer, these individuals have been meeting weekly to make this week. So um, let's show them some love on the chat, give them shout outs. Um, and now I'm excited for y'all to meet our first presenter for the week. I had the pleasure of seeing them perform this weekend at, at a fun drag brunch. Our presenter is the first black trans woman in the Pacific Northwest to start and found her own house, the eclectic beauty house known as the House of Monet. Currently standing in Washington state, they are the oldest running house since its creation in 2018. She's known in her community for snatching trophies, her stunning looks and breathtaking witty performances. Using both glamor and humor, she's sure to keep an audience beyond entertained. So let's all welcome Tina Shea Monet. Hello, hello everyone. Thank you so much for that marvelous introduction, Gio. And thank you as well, Maya, for entering us into this space. As said before, my name is Tiana Monet, AKA Tina Shea Monet, for everyone that knows me in the scene and in nightlife. Um, I am from Seattle, Washington, AKA West Seattle, or what's also known as unceded Duwamish land. And I just wanted to start off by thanking everyone for coming here and tuning in on this marvelous afternoon. Um, and I just wanted to open up with what we we're talking about today, and that is love, and not just any kind of love, but it's self-love, and the power and meaning and 
what stands behind loving yourself because the greatest love of all is self-love because as a famous cross-dresser once said, if you can't love yourself, how can you love anybody else? Somebody here knows. Let me get an amen to somebody in the comments. I want to see it. There we go. Pure. So I want to talk about what the journey of loving myself insists of, what that meant to me, and how did I get on this road of self-discovery and love? Because it took a long journey for me to get to where I'm at today to look how I look, talk how I talk, and walk how I walk. And that basically just came from a place in my life of knowing that I didn't really see anyone that looked like me. I didn't see anyone that talked like me. I didn't see anyone that moved around and operated in life like me. And that for a while, through a lot of my childhood and a lot of my youth, had brought me a lot of pain and hurt, feeling like I was just the only one and that I didn't feel seen in anyone or I didn't feel like anyone could see me and I feel like what I took with that what I took with that pain and what I took with those life lessons I molded into something new and with that being said from that road that is less travel I took that mission and I took that journey to take up that space the space that I was going into looking for blindly thinking that someone was coming to be my guy, golden light or my shining example, when that wasn't shown to me, I think it took me to reach inside to see that that person who I was looking for was me all along and that I have to lead by example, being that the example was not set. I have to set the standard. Whenever you walk into a room, and this is especially vital for my LGBT family, I want you all to know that when you walk into a room and you feel as if there's no one there that looks like you or there's no one else that you can be inspired by or see yourself in, just know you're most likely that person in the room that someone else is looking for as a guiding light. You are definitely that person that someone's definitely trying to find themselves in. Excuse me, I just bumped my light. <laughs> but I wanted to say that because there's been so many times where I enter spaces and I'm unsure how to maneuver, I'm unsure how to move, I'm unsure how to, I guess, take my role and take my place. And with that being said is, if you don't see anyone doing it, you are the one doing it. You can't see anyone ahead of you because they're behind you, you're leading the pack. And I don't feel like a lot of people are aware of this goal or this blessing, this duty that's put upon you. Let me find my SAT words, y'all. Let's get into it. I feel like people don't realize that, you know, even though you might not feel like it on the inside, but someone's looking up to you. And that's anyone and everyone in the world right now. No matter how much you might not feel like you're a leader, everyone has a little bit of a leader inside them. This is coming from me, a Leo. You know us Leos, we're the leader of the Zodiac. So I carry that very true to my heart. Um, but with that being said, you have to create these opportunities for yourself. If you don't see these opportunities, you create these opportunities. You make way and you pave the way that you want to see. If there's no road in front of you, baby, that's because you're building it. You just don't know you're building it. Um, that is honestly how I personally came into this CTAC ballroom scene. And when I went to my first ball out in Portland, Oregon, it saved my life. I've been a performer for about two years prior to my step into ballroom as a drag queen, as a performer, a nightlife queen, you know, queen of the night. And I always felt like that was, I felt like it was it. I felt like it was cute, but there was always something missing. I didn't see any six foot one tall black drag queens out there doing what they were doing. I didn't see that. And I thought there was something wrong with me. I thought there was something missing with me. And I thought that I was the problem. But little did I know, because I did not have the self-love at the time, that I was the leader. I was the person who was coming in and making these changes, these changes to what the scene knows itself as to now today. And when I stepped into ballroom, my eyes just opened. And I was like, wow, I am not alone. These are my people. These are, the, these are the people in life that I've been looking for for so long. This is the family that I've been needing. And even within that, I still didn't see nobody that looked like me now. Don't get it confused. 
Ain't nobody looking like me. And I said, well, if no one's looking like me and there's no one that I can look up to and there's no one that I can take notes from, then the only thing for me to do at this point is to become the resource and to become the blueprint, if you may. And that's where I ended up starting my own house. I just felt like there wasn't really anyone in this scene or in life at the moment for me that I could look up to and take notes from. And I figured with all the trials and tribulations of life that I've been through, for anybody that knows anything, a wise man knows they know nothing at all. But with that being said, I knew that with the knowledge that I have, I'm still growing. I'm still changing. I'm still evolving. I'm still learning to love myself. I'm still loving myself more and more every day. Sometimes less, sometimes more. It all depends on how you uphold yourself and how you look to yourself and what you see for yourself. As long as you keep that optimistic eye open and, and you're always looking for the better for improvement, you'll never fail. You'll never fail. Anything in life at that point is just a stepping stool or an opportunity for you to grow, evolve, to flourish, to blossom. And I take all of my learning practices and all of my experiences and all of my trials and tribulations of life. And I take those as stepping stones for me to evolve, for me to take the next steps that I do need to further encompass. I told y'all I'm bringing up SAT <laughs> words today, okay? So look, I'm like, I'm like a little stuck every now and then and pause, but the words in there, um, it, it's just something that you take to level yourself up. You know, if anyone knows what a diamond is, we all know what diamonds are. Diamonds are girls' best friend. Diamonds start out as coal, rocks, underneath the ground, dirt, nothing special. But what's applied to that dirt, what's applied to that soil is pressure. Pressure constantly, all of your trials, tribulations, all of, I keep saying trials and tribulations, Joe, let me find a better word. All of your struggles in life, all of your downfalls, everything that is taken for you or taken at you that you feel like, you know, this is too much. These things are used to apply pressure to you. So that way that dirt in that soil, eventually she becomes the diamond. She blossoms, she flourishes, and she comes out of that dirt a full-fledged diamond. But what you do with diamonds, they be on them. You show them and you show that inner love and that inner peace that you have on yourself. You let the world see because maybe the world's already watching. They already know. But it's your goal and it's your job to have that love for yourself. All your experiences happen for a reason. All of the bad things, all of the crying nights, lonely nights. Maybe we all know all the sips of wine that you might have to get you through. It's all for a reason. It's called character development. We all need character development. And that's what makes a diamond. That is what we call perseverance. I told y'all, y'all gonna write these SAT words out tonight. I'm telling y'all, I'm, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna be diabolical with these words. Um, so for me, that is how I came into the scene to say, I need to create what I don't see. I need to create what I want because I have the experience, I have the knowledge and all that it takes for me is to look into myself with the love that I have for myself and further take those issues or those afflictions and turn them into something new. You turn those bad things, those weapons, those everything negative and you turn it into something positive. Whenever I go through something in life and I just feel like it's too much, I just go, oh, I'm gonna be a bad bitch after this excuse my language, but I'm going to be a bad bitch after this because I know I'm stressed. I'm going through it. My hair feels like it's thinning. Y'all can't see it. Little dying in. You see it? I be feeling like I'm just going through it. I can't make it through. But when I realize all of these things that I'm going through are what it takes to get to the next level. You can't go through the next level. Whenever you're in life and you feel like you're at the top of the food chain, baby, let me tell you, you're not. I think the greatest piece of advice that I received was from my cousin. And she told me I was fourth grade going on fifth. Or was I fifth going into sixth? It don't matter. I was going up a grade. I was going up a new scale, a new, a new journey in life. And she told me, baby, I'm going to let you know this. You can always be the small beta, the beta fish in the pool. You will always be the small fish in the pool. You know why? Because once you overgrow that pool that you're in now, you're going to get shifted into another tank. 
when you get moved into that new tank, that new journey in life, you can be that small fish again. And you have to grow, constantly evolve. And I feel like with love and with self-love, it's an ongoing journey. You're going to have to have new times in life where you look in the mirror. Sometimes you might feel like, oh, I don't see it. And then the next morning after that, oh, baby, you see this skin? You see this? Oh, I feel it. You know, it's an ongoing journey. There's no such thing as perfect. There's no such thing as perfection, even though it's a goal that I strive for, which doesn't exist, which tells you a lot about me. Um, it's just something that you have to constantly give yourself grace. You have to constantly give yourself the power and the patience. That's the word that I want to use. You have to give yourself the patience to continue moving. Life is hard. Maybe we all go through it. We got bills. We got social things. We got anxiety. We got all these things in life. But all of these are put into your life and they're put into your path to help you grow, to help you move, to help you evolve. Um, just like with the little fish to the big fish story, like you're always going to be the small one. But the journey with being the small one is that if you keep feeding yourself, you feed your soul, find yourself something that you like, read a good book. Read a good anime, read a good manga, not a good anime. Watch a good anime, read a good manga, okay? I, I'm reading JoJo right now. We love the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. You gotta find you something. You gotta find you something that you love. And like a plant, you gotta nourish yourself. You know, like a plant, we all nourish ourselves. Everything in life nourishes ourselves. You gotta have your water, your food. You gotta have what you need. These are the things that you need to take time for yourself to grow. You can't just grow with no problems. You can't become that diamond without that pressure. You can't do these things on your own and feel like you're going to get somewhere because if you travel through life feeling like you're at the top of the top, baby, you still have small fish. You still have room to grow. You always have room to grow. <laughs> with that being said, I feel like the biggest thing that you just have to take is giving yourself the time and giving yourself the patience and the ability to feed into yourself, not your ego, but feed into yourself, feed into what you need. The egos are going to always be there. We all have ego. Everybody has a little bit of an ego. You know, growing up, we had she go. Ink impossible. And I said, she's a, she a bad girl. I like her. But aside from she go, you know, you got the ego. You don't want to feel feel that. You want to feel the inside. You want to feel the heart. You want to feel the soul. I'm a comedy girl, so I might go on these tangents and <laughs> I might go on these random tangents. Please excuse me. It's how I talk. It's how I process. Y'all understand. Um, Y'all just have to understand that you just have to continue giving yourself what you need to grow. Sometimes you might not feel like you have everything and that's okay. That's a part of the journey of loving yourself. Just like Going natural with hair, like, it's not always going to look good. Some days you're going to look in the mirror and be like, oh, baby, it's short. But it's not going to be short forever unless you want it to. Yeah. It'd be short if you want. We love short hair. We love long hair. But it's all a journey is what I'm trying to say. And with that and how that ties into me and ballroom, it's all a journey. I never thought that I would be known as a leader or a blueprint or something like that. But when I realize that this is something that is under me, this is something that I have to uphold and uplift, it's an honor. And it's something that I look forward to every day, waking up in the morning and seeing my family, texting the group chat, coming from a family personally, where my grandma had nine kids, all her nine kids had kids, and my dad was the youngest out of the whole group. So I already came into the game with a biological family that's just huge out of this world. And with that being said, with that family, I never felt seen. I never felt embraced. I never felt the attention on me. And when I did find the attention on me, it was never in a positive way. That's when they could always see that that diamond in the rough in me, my whole family saw it. But they only saw it as the dirt and the soil first. They couldn't acknowledge the sparkle that I had within. And when I knew that when I was of age to separate myself from that and to put myself in a more positive surrounding where I can grow and change and evolve on my own, 
without anything or constrictions or anything like that placed on me, I flourished. And it honestly happened quite instantly. And sometimes it's not a matter of what you're doing, but it also matters on where you surround yourself in and where you put your energy and your time into. It doesn't matter if you have the most immaculate blueprint for a house or mansion out there, you get the finest contractors and builders and all that money can buy. If you build that house on sand, it's gonna fall. If you try and build yourself and love yourself on sand, it's gonna fall. Some people might not wanna hear this, but some friends that you have or some people in your circle might be that sand. And if you don't get yourself on that solid foundation, on a solid branch of people and loved ones who are going to support you, uplift you through the bad. If they can't see through the bad, baby, they don't deserve to see it at your good. And that's something that I feel like everyone needs to take in. And that for me was a lesson that took me so long to learn. And once I learned that, it ties back into self-love. Because when you love others so much, but they don't give back into you or they can't give back into you, that's not loving yourself. I think a better analogy is you have a cup. Everyone has a cup. When you put water in that cup, you're nourishing yourself. When you're reading your favorite books, when you're watching your favorite shows, listening to your favorite music, that's filling up the cup, baby. And when you have a full cup, you pour that cup out into others. You pour that cup out into people who are around you, who surround you, who you want to uplift. But baby, eventually, if you don't refill that cup, you're going to go on empty. And you can't travel on empty. You can't build a mansion on sand. That's just not something that is possible. And that's something that all has to do with changing your surroundings. When I went into ballroom, I changed my surroundings. I changed my circles. And that isn't necessarily shade to the people who were in my life before, as I said. In order to become that diamond, you're going to need those afflictions, those challenges, and those things that are in your life. You're going to need those people. They help for your character development. But when it's time to grow and blossom and be that diamond who you really are, you need to make sure that those people around you are the best of the best. You need to make sure that you're surrounding yourself by people who love you, who support you. Because that way, you refill your cup. When you're pouring out your cup, they pour right back into you. And that is love. That self-love, that's everything that you need. And that's everything that you need to flourish. I feel like, you know, that's all I really need to even say. And um, I'm more than excited to answer all of our Q&As. I see the questions filling up in the chat, 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 chat right now. Um, I appreciate everyone watching, but I'm going to also go on ahead and take this time to pass our mic right on over to Father Zende Monet and let them tell their story and let them give y'all a little insight. <laughs> Hello all, my name is Zende Monet, AKA Mufasa Monet. Um, I also grew up here in Seattle on unceded Duwamish land. Um, I grew up in the Central District. And in that time, I grew up in a very large family. Um, I am one of 10. So growing up in that kind of environment um, is very hard to gain a sense of foothold of self. Um, you were constantly combating and competing with your siblings, trying to gain some form of attention. And with 10 siblings, parents can't give attention to all of them. And so you had everyone's um, fighting around for that same kind of attention, but no one's really gonna get that in full. And so for the majority of my life, um, I, spent a lot, I spent a lot of time just um, really trying to step into that limelight without actually trying to find things that actually built me and made me. And so as I started to grow up, I started to really like realize like over time that, you know, self-love is, is the backbone of, of who you are in life. It's how you become like your actual genuine self and how you find new things about yourself that you never thought you would find. And um, over time, I would try and start actually, you know, getting into things that I would like, bring them to my family, try and like, you know, get my mom to like sign me up to things. And a lot of times growing up, just because also about myself, I didn't really know what it meant to be queer or what it meant to have that within myself, but it was something that was budding that I didn't even know. And so 
I would often come to my mom um, about things that I really wanted to do, like gymnastics, you know, um, acting, dancing, a lot of things like that. But being the standard of how people put into the world as far as what is defined as masculine and what is um, treated and respected as masculine, a lot of times you got denied. And so over time, the feeling of self-worth and self-love began to diminish within myself. And it took a very long time to build that back up. And I just remember always, you know, after a certain point, probably around like middle school, I decided to try and just take the background of it. Notice that things weren't being paid attention to as much as I wish or wanted to. And so my solution was to step back and just wait, wait, you know, until my moment came. And once I got to high school, I began to gain a lot more, you know, control over my life and the things that I engaged in. And in that time, I started to investigate and like find more of myself in different things such as poetry. Um, I did speech and debate. And I really just started to widen my scope on the things that I actually love to do. In that time, I also learned, you know, about my queer identity and learning that um, honestly, and that's another thing about queer identity is more of a journey. So even at that point, I was still only at the starting line for that. But um, I came out as bi first and through time, learned more about myself to find that I was more, that I was pan. And from that point on, I learned more about myself to find out that I do identify as non-binary. And so there was a lot of time and a lot of growth that went into that. and. Um, I started to just learn over time is that you can't rush anything. Anything that's worthwhile, anything that's worth your attention and worth your love is going to take some hard work because at the end of the day, those are the things that are going to build you up. Those are the things that are going to make you feel whole within yourself. And it's really hard to find those things but that's in those moments where you have to really like get out of your comfort zone and find those things because they're not going to come. They're not going to just come to you. You got to work on it. You got to find them. And that's where ballroom really came into play for me is like, even after high school, you know, there were still a lot of things that didn't quite make sense to me. Um, and not having as many friends or as any people that were within my, um, what is called, Within my same sense of mind, I didn't really have any too many people to actually look around to for advice and to actually build on those things that make me me. And so I spent a lot of day, I spent a lot of my time within um, the hip hop community. Um, I'm also a rapper, so like for me, my um, release of self and release of like self expression was within hip hop and poetry. Um, and many of you might know as of around the 2016 era, there were a lot of, the hip hop culture was very much based around um, heteronormative uh, views. And so for me is I spent a lot of my time essentially masked within a heteronormative self. And with that being um, said, it's kind of hard to express that kind of vibe and like, especially like express yourself in totality. And so I spent a lot of my time suppressing what I actually felt within myself as far as my queer identity go, go, um, went because I felt that if I was going to flourish within the hip hop community, there are certain sacrifices that I would have to take. But little did I know that that was not true. Um, and so over time, I spent a lot of time within that community, but over uh, it began to weigh and it began to drain me to a deeper level and I had to take a step back. And it hurt me, you know, because at the end of the day, as I did enjoy doing hip hop and doing poetry, but it did very much drain me in how I was um, navigating that space. And so over time, I began to, I began to like look into myself and think about, hmm, what part of that brought me down? And I began to look back um, and notice that a lot of it was because I wasn't loving myself. And I wasn't loving the parts of myself that actually made me 
you know, who I actually am today. And so I had to take a step back and look into that and actually find a lot more of myself and um, start to actually rework myself in the sense of how I wanted to display my art. And, and since then, I had, um, what is it called? Since then, I had found out that I actually love not just poetry and hip hop, I also love modeling. I also learned that there was just a lot more of exposure within self. And then when Ballroom came around to me, which is when me and Tiana met, um, I realized that there was so much more within me that has just been really bottled up. And having Ballroom around me allowed me to, you know, find and like really dig deep into the self-love of myself and like actually start to like bring out more of that creative self, bring out more of that creative vibe, bring out that more genuine me. And so I started to, I remember the first ball that I walked, I had previously went to like two balls prior, but I just remember watching and like seeing everybody like healing their oats, having fun, enjoying themselves. And I was like, I'm gonna walk because at that moment I felt like this is my space, this is my community. And this is where I feel like I can flourish. Let me interject. I was on the panel and I was <laughs> judging that ball. And I had asked him, I was like, you gonna walk? I said, no. I was like, Too I wanna see you walk. You should walk. You have a nice walk. You got good stage presence. Let me see you walk. No. I said, oh, okay. And so I got there. I sat around, I watched everybody. And then I was like, why not? Like, this is an amazing space. This is where, this is the place where I feel I can take space. And so I went for it. And in that moment, I felt like a flood, like a, just a fury of just love and just self-motivation within myself. And just like knowing that feeling, having that feeling was very foreign to me for a long time. And so getting that vibe and actually being able to feel that out and have something come back to me that I didn't, you know, expect to come from that was very refreshing and that in its own like brought a different view and perspective about myself um and how i wanted to carry myself and how i wanted to also like encourage others to get um get themselves into the mindset and into spaces in which they can also feel like themselves to their fullest and so after that um I spent a lot of a little bit of time like actually thinking about how I can affect the community and how I can actually get more people within the spaces such um, for ballroom and how they can use those spaces to actually, you know, you know, display themselves to the most of their to the best of their capability. And that was when I came to the conclusion that I wanted to be the house father. And me and Tiana had conversations and Honestly, it's been a really lovely journey since then. And I've been able to meet new people, bring in children and get them into ballroom spaces, helping them be able to actually like learn in different parts of themselves and different ways in which they can express themselves and being able to see that and see them grow in those spaces, even still currently growing into those spaces is honestly so lovely to see because it's a resource that I wish that I had had when I was younger. It's a black thing. Mm -hmm. And um, within like our house, especially within our dynamics, we try to make sure that we, you know, influence or uh, put forth that we are a family first and that we try to speak up about the things that we want within our community and within our family, which comes to our first rule within our house, which is say so. We built that rule because a lot of us, a lot of us have grown up in families where we didn't feel like we could do that. And that being so, it created a lot of trauma within many of us. And I know it definitely did within myself and made me feel as though there are a lot of spaces in which I could not speak up and not say so. And so being able to create that as our first rule and actually be able to like uplift our children to be able to do so creates a positive narrative and honestly a positive just community in general being able to speak your mind and being able to speak when somebody um, either has harmed you 
has brought your self-worth to a point that you didn't think it would and allowing you to exercise self-love so that you can actually become a better person. And not only that, help those around you become better people. And so my journey is only just begun um, as a house father. I want to be able to continue to push that journey to be able to bring more people into the space of, you know, being able to find themselves and, you know, just bring out that genuine self that hasn't been seen for a long time. And that all starts and forever will start and end with self-love. And so I want y'all to really think about these kind of things. Think about how you are looking into yourself and how you are um, navigating your spaces and think about whether or not you are taking the time to say so. Think about um, whether or not you are taking the time to express yourself to your fullest and think about whether or not you are in the actual space where you feel comfortable to do so. Because if you are not, it is, it is stifling. And you have to be able to put yourself inside the communities, inside the spaces that you want um, or that you feel is comfortable in order for you to grow and become the person that you want to. And with that being said, I'm gonna pass it back to Gio. Thank y'all so much for having us here. And thank you for being a lovely and receiving audience. And we look forward to your questions. All right. So let's give it up for the Monets. Thank you all so much. Um, we do have our break at 12.50. Um, we do have questions on Q&A. We can go ahead and start if that's okay with the Monets, um, with some of the questions. Um, just knowing that some of the attendees that we have might have to go to class, um, might move to a different classroom. So let's go ahead and start question. Um, Maya, I invite you to like come here and co-host with me if that's okay. Um, the first question on our list is, what if the things you do are just for the sake of others' happiness? So I think this is um, talking about... Um, like loving yourself and making sure that you're doing things that is for your own good and that it makes you happy. But what if the things you do are just for the sake of others' happiness? Um, let me talk a little bit. Yeah, go ahead. So when I was talking earlier about the cup scenario, when you, I guess, look at yourself as a cup, a cup of water, wine, cup of whatever, whatever floats your boat, close to go. When you are constantly taking your cup and you're taking the things that you need for yourself and you're pouring it into others, eventually after a while, even if it does bring you happiness, you can't continue pouring into your cup and you can't continue pouring into others' cup. You can't continue giving unto others without giving something back to yourself. At the end of the day, even if it does bring you great joy, there's still going to be a time that you need to recharge that social battery. Because, honey, I can talk to everybody and talk to or talk about all of our afflictions going on, what's hurt us throughout the week. And eventually, even though it brings me joy to talk about these things and to create these conversations, you're going to have to get back to yourself. And that might not be taking yourself out to a shopping spree or something like that. It could be a nice little bubble bath. Something really simple. Light a candle, baby. Turn off the lights. Get your back massage. You know, hit up the massage chair. Something that is simple like that is what helps you refill your cup. Doing things like that are what allows you to continue manifesting into yourself. So that way you can continuously give up to others. All right, thank you. Um, and then I'll just go with the next question. What is your favorite hobbies or what are your like favorite hobbies? I play video games, love it down, quickly. I'm just gonna play video games right after this, period. Get into it. <laughs> um, I too play video games. I very much love to do so. Um, I also love to roller skate. I love to um, write, just as anything that I could do to really just like let off the stress of the day. And, but those are definitely the main ones. Yeah, I would, I would say video games, um, 
drawing, fashion, sketching, things like those that help me restock and fill my own cup if you may. <laughs> oh, they're very serious about that. I'm very serious when I say that I roll skate. I have my own skates. I take them to the rink. I put my headphones in and I refill my cups to fullest. So if you like to skate, if you need some for movement, go buy you some skates. Take to the rink. Get your headphones. Have fun. <laughs> See you at Queer Skate in West Seattle. <laughs> yes. Plug. <laughs> Um, there's a question on the chat that I think uh, was not able to make it to the Q&A, but um, how long did this journey take you? And this can, oh. both, can go for both of you. For me, and I'll start and end with this, my journey's not over. Even though I'm here to talk to you all today about self-love, my own journey with self-love is not over. And I don't feel like anyone should feel as if any journey that they're on is over that they're at the top of the pole. When I said that you're always the smallest fish in the pond, I meant that. And for me, I would say it took me ever since high school, so that's 2016 to now, yeah. is when I really started to go, okay, I need to focus on myself. I need to know what makes me happy. I need to know what is going to make me flourish because if I don't and I continue operating through life trying to get by, without giving myself the attention and the love that I need, I'm not gonna make it. I'm literally not gonna make it. I'm not going to survive if I cannot give back to myself. And that journey has definitely been, I would say almost a whole damn decade in the making, but it's, it's been a while. And I don't want anyone to think that it just stops here as I come here now, bright eyed and bushy tailed to talk to you guys about love. It's still not over. And I'm still going through some challenges in every day today life, but like we're all human. And that's a part of the journey is to constantly evolve and to constantly grow and love yourself more and more every day. And like, I'm going to tag on to that. Like definitely that journey will always be forever. And I say that because some days you'll have your downs and those are the days that honestly with that, when you're going to have to reevaluate and like, rebuild that self-love again because you're gonna have to it's gonna be literally a full roller coaster and you have your good days your bad days but those bad days make the good days 10 times better and so keep on that journey keep it up but like you will have your tough days and that's okay because everyone has them we all have them but they definitely make us stronger and so over time the self-love will just get better that's a period. Okay. Um, before I let everyone go on an intermission, last question is like, hey, Monace, what is your favorite food? I love to eat, baby. I don't know about you, but I love to eat and I love to cook. She's the cook. I'm the chef queen, down mm -hmm. boots, period. Mama work your ass boots, got got boots. Um, <laughs> I can tell you what I'm obsessed with right now and was always on my taste buds. I made this at our last house meeting. I love cream of potato soup. I said it, I, it's an addiction at this point. I love a good creamy cream of potato soup with some green onions and chives. So let me, bro, let me start it. It's, it slaps, it's real good. Like mm -hmm. when I tell you that she can throw down, she can throw down. It's soup season, y'all. <laughs> it is soup season. And for me, you know, I, my family is Honduran, so I love me a real good chicken enchilada. Ooh, it just hits real good. That is my favorite. I'll make that. I can eat that any day, any year, any month. I'll eat it all, every single day, and I will have no complaints. Um, I'm also a baker, so like for dessert wise, I love me a good pineapple turnover cake. Mm, it's real good. Don't, don't I see, come on, hungry. soup potluck in the, in the chat. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm here for it. All so, right. So. Well, thank you so much. Uh, we'll go back at 1 p.m. here. Uh, we'll do like a, ten, a quick 10 minute intermission break. Um, we have a lot of great questions on our QA, so I can't wait to ask you all these questions. Um, but yeah, so for our attendees, 
feel uh, please make sure to if you are leaving, um, it'll be posted on the chat. Please don't forget to do the form and the feedback. Um, Bitly CCI slash CCIE evaluation. So thank you all, and I believe our ZJ Edwina will be playing us uh, some music. All right, see you in ten minutes. Love you all. Oh, thank you, Edwina, for that song. That was amazing. I want to keep going, but we have a program to continue. Um, I would like to invite Maya on the stage and, of course, the Monets. Um, welcome back, you all. Um, so now we're just going to take turns um, asking. We have a lot of amazing questions on the Q&A. So we're just gonna take turns on asking questions on Monet's. Um, this is now the Maya and Gio show with our special guest, the Monet's. Uh, I'll start us off with our first question. Um, can you explain the ballroom culture, what it means to have a house and being house mother and house father and bringing new family members into your house for those that might not know what that means? Absolutely. I can speak on this very fluent. I feel like when I had brought up my backstory about being in a large family, for me, what ballroom was that everything that I was not allowed, everything that I was not given, all the love that I could not receive from my own family, I took that and I created my own family. And I feel like that's not just my story to tell. That's majority of everyone in ballrooms tell, usually when they're doing it for the right reasons. Ballroom is, an, is a place and it's an opportunity where queer people who are ostracized from, you know, the cis world, we have a place to come to. It's our safe space to grow and to evolve and to be honored and loved for our talents and for what we bring to the table. And with what houses are formed, houses are formed to keep those people in community, give them a solid foundation and to give them a solid group of people that they can rely on, that they can trust, that they can talk to, that they can spend time with, as such as a chosen family. And that is the basis of what Barroom is for. Not to talk about what the competitive side is, it's a whole different nature, but it definitely goes hand in hand with competing and definitely making sure that the family aspect of houses and what that's for. And as I said earlier, my duty as mother is that all of the things that I felt like I didn't get as a child, it is my opportunity and it's my right to create these spaces of opportunity where the things that I did not get, I can make sure that my queer family gets. I can make sure that they get the love, the opportunities, the bookings, the long FaceTime calls on the phone. I can give them all of these things. And I feel like that is what people are looking for in community that don't have those opportunities or the people to talk to. And it's my goal and it's my mission as a mother to be able to create that solid map and that solid foundation of people that, you know, you can rely and trust on. That's what Barham is to me. And for me as father, I have, like I touched on it earlier, is my um, purpose is to bring people in and be able to like allow them space to grow into their most genuine self. And that is still to say because a lot of people just don't always have that space. And so in order to get past or get further, it would then like you have to be able to like actually start somewhere, which is also, you know, finding yourself. And if you want to find yourself and you can really do anything that you need to from that point on. So for me as father, it's just to be able to foster and grow that for people and also be able to help create spaces in which they can actually use that after the fact that, you know, that they have grown, grown to find themselves and just, you know, be a guiding light for that at all times. Thank you for that question. All right, thank you for all of your third answers and that reflections. On to our next Q&A question from Ro Boys. Um, question is, what advice would you give to your younger self? Mm -hmm. Your yeah, um, <laughs> I will give my younger self three points. One, speak up. You are a mighty voice. You have a lot of things to say and you have a lot of experiences to give. Um, two, 
express yourself, know that whatever you find and um, find to be your actual point of outlet, none of that is wrong. It's who you are. And to be able to grow and foster that, especially, you know, at a younger age is an important thing. And three is don't be a pushover. You know, you have power, use it. That's what I would give my younger self. I would say the number one thing that I would tell my younger self, stretch, bitch. Stretch them legs out. We have a middle split we're working on and we could have did it a lot sooner if you would have been stretching. Um, That's number one. And I was, <laughs> I cracked myself up. Um, I think also with that, I would say, you know what you want and you know who you are and there's no reason to try and nurture it on your own. It might not seem like you would have a support system, but you do. And definitely take that leap. And I think that was a big problem for me growing up is that I was too afraid to take the leap. I was too afraid to take that step that would take me to the next level because I felt like I just wasn't ready. But had I had known this at a younger age, no one knows. No one is ready. Even the adults that we know now that we think of are so full of wisdom, they don't be knowing what they're doing. And I feel like that was something as a child that I did not understand. I figured when you get to a certain age, you know everything. And I feel like when I'm coming into myself as an adult, now I'm learning the people who came before me did not know everything. And it's okay to not know everything because we're constantly evolving and growing. And I would tell myself to give myself that patience and continue doing what you're doing and just take that step. Lastly, spark that YouTube channel. Just do it. I was really scared. And I felt like there was a lot of things holding me back. I was like, I don't know what if my family sees it. What if people see it? That's the point, baby. They're supposed <laughs> to see it, honey. That's how you get somewhere is exposure. You get seen. And I was, as I said in the last one, you know, I'm always scared to take that step. So definitely take that step. Do what you need to do for yourself and stretch. It's still struggling with that middle split. Side split, left split, right split, all that I can't even do it. I can't get lower than a squat. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. Uh, so the next question, um, how do I enter the ballroom scene respectfully? I think the best way to enter the ballroom scene, and this is a question that I feel like can go towards both queer people and allies, is to take up your space and watch. You support the scene first. You have to see what you're getting yourself into. And from all my allies that I feel like, feel like they need to walk or they feel like they need to do this night, you don't. As an ally, the thing that you can do is to participate, just show up, just watch, be a presence because nine times out of 10, majority all it takes is for you to be in the room. When you're in the room that you can watch, that's how you can start out. And eventually when you've been there and you put the time in to help contribute to that scene and to grow it, then you should walk. Then you should do what you wanna do. But I think for starters, it doesn't hurt anyone. I feel like anyone and everyone can go to a ball and watch, mm -hmm. you know, clap for who you need to clap for, root for who you need to root for, and that's it. Follow your houses, and when the events come up, show up. That's it. All right, thank you. And another question, the Q&A, can you reiterate the cup analogy, please? And then after that, there's also a similar follow-up question. Yes, I'm glad we're going back to this cup analogy because I was replaying it back in my head and I low-key got it misconstrued. With the cup analogy, when I'm saying that you're supposed to give into your cup and, and replenish your cup, your cup should not just be full. Your cup should be overflowing because you're just constantly refilling that cup, refilling that cup. And with the overflow that you get in that cup, with that overflow, you pour into others' cup. So that way, when you're pouring into the others' cup, you'll never be empty. Because when you're empty, you can't do anything at all. When that cup has nothing in it, when it's dried out, you don't have anything to give back. That's why you need not only a full glass to give onto others, you need an overflowing cup. Your cup shall overflow. When it does, you take that overflow and you give to others that need it. What was the second part? 
sorry no that, that's that's my part now sorry i'm taking notes I'm, I'm like okay i like that analogy um going back to the cup analogy what would you do if you're already on empty but your peers are expecting you to pour out even more into the community so the best thing you could do in that moment is you gotta set boundaries you gotta say you gotta say so you gotta say no Sometimes dude, I can't do that right now. I have things to work on. I need to be able to refill my cup and be able to refill my energy before I can give back to anybody. Because when you start to pour out on empty, there's nothing to give and people can see that, you know? And that will furthermore affect you and now furthermore hurt you and also the people that are around you. And so the best thing that you could do in that moment is pause yeah hey i can't do that right now i need to work on myself i feel like if these people that are expecting you to constantly give out into their into their cups as well if they truly do love you and they truly are your friends and they are truly your support system they should be more than understanding to hear you say out of your own mouth i cannot do this baby mm -hmm. i cannot currently i'm lacking in things that i need for myself and until i refill my own cup I really can't do anything. Or you don't have to say refill my own cup, but you have, you have to be able to say, until I get back to myself or until I feel complete as a person, I cannot give what you need at this moment. And if they're respecting and loving of you, perfect. And if they're not, baby, snip, snip. This time for them to go. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Maya, do you have a next question? Yeah, sort of just trying to listen to all these amazing points and being able to process that. And to the next question, what was that rock bottom moment for you that catapulted? Oh, okay, sorry, it moved into the answer part. And what was the rock bottom moment for you that catapulted you into your self love journey? Mm. Well. The rock bottom moment for me that's catapulted to my self um, self love journey was, um, I would say about two and a half years ago, I got evicted. Um, I didn't quite know where I wanted to go or what I wanted to do. I wholly felt defeated, and um, in that moment, I had a feeling of kind of like there's really nothing else to lose except for to try and build yourself back up. And so in that moment, I started to actually like, you know, actively do more writing and just try and focus on the moments in which I kind of messed up along that journey and try and learn and reflect on those things. And I, in that time, doubt to myself that I would never reach that point again. And since that point, I have, in my opinion, I've only gone up and I'm going to keep going up because I know for a fact that I'm never going there again. Um, I'm not that person anymore. I am a person of growth. I'm a person of light and I will make it to my destination in due time, but never again back to that point. No, that's fine. For me, I feel as if my rock bottom point was a lot for me, baby. I feel like I've hit rock bottom a couple times, but that's okay. It's how, you know, the journey of life goes. But I feel like for me, it was very much in the beginning of my transition. And this is when I was realizing that I was building a journey. I was building a dream on broken land and I was building these ideals and these goals with a broken I was building it on sand it's the basic way I can say this and I feel like once I had realized that and I realized that it was not just myself that needed to grow more it was my circle as well when I realized that maybe my cup was empty and I was the one who was constantly pouring out of an empty glass with nothing left to give and when I kept doing it, people started turning on me. People started to leave me. People started to 
not accept me at my lowest. And when I realized that, it was a very, very hard realization for me. But it was something that was very vital for my character development that the people who I would surround myself with were not necessarily there for me. They were there for what I could do for them. And the moment that I figured that out, and I was able to cut these people out of my life and focus more so on the things that I need to uphold myself and to continue going and moving and growing in my own journey and my own transition, I feel like everything just fell into place ever since then. All right, thank you. Um, so our next question is, it's two, but I'm just gonna make it to one question. Um, I just lost it. Okay. What is this say so thing you keep referencing? And why is say so rule important to you all? So for me, say so is our number one rule. And it's my life rule that I like to live by because for so long I feel like I went through life without a voice. And I feel like I went through life without having that backbone to set my own boundaries. I feel like once I learned that you can set your own boundaries with people and how you traverse through life, everything became so much easier because as a person without boundaries, you become very much so a yes man. And within that, you're always giving into other people and you're always doing things for others without really acknowledging what you need to do for yourself. And where say, say So came along with was to say that hey, baby, I do have this voice. And where that comes in to the dynamic of our house, it comes into that there are some houses that I have seen where if the mother does something out of pocket, you can't check her because that's mother. You can't ever come for mother. And I felt like when I started my house, I don't want that dynamic. I want it to be that if I step on your toe, anyone in my house, you all have the right to say, hey, baby, I don't like that. Mother, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to disagree. And I wanted everyone to know that when we started on this, it's something I said on our very first meeting with my house. Everyone has the ability to give in and to implement their own wisdom. Everyone has the opportunity and the ability to give in to their own ideas. And they will all be heard. As long as we keep that within mind, communication is number one, not only with a house, it's number one within a relationship. It's number one within a friendship. It's number one with anything that you need as a human being to communicate. You need to be able to speak your boundaries, set your limits, set what you're comfortable with, what you're not comfortable with. That for me is what say so is. That's why it's our number one rule. It's only two words, baby. Say so. You feeling some kind of way? Say so. You're not agreeing with something? Say so. And that's it. That's where that comes from. And that's why it's so important to me and to my house as well. I can definitely see why it's so important. And I can really feel your total emphasis on the phrase. Um, to the next question, uh, how can I help better show up for trans women of color as an ally? This is a question I love because I feel like so often I hear people take up these roles as allies, but I feel like there's a lot of facts within the word ally that gets misconstrued. While yes, you're fighting with us, I want people to understand that you're not fighting for us, if that makes sense. In order to be an ally, this is my favorite analogy I like to use. I'm full of analogies, y'all. Y'all gonna learn this today. You're gonna learn this today. I love an analogy. To be an ally, you are nothing more than a megaphone. Your duty as an ally, be that microphone, that megaphone to use your power, your platform, your own voice to uplift the voices of others. That's not to say to speak for others, to speak for Black trans women. That's not what I'm asking. I'm asking you to take your platform, take your power that you have as an ally and you uplift these girls who don't have that. Some of these girls don't have a platform. Some of these girls don't have or feel like they have a voice. And as an ally where you can help with that is to uplift these girls. Donate to a girl's cash app, donate to a girl's Venmo, whatever that is. If a girl has a post of whatever they need, share that post. That's something that in our modern trends, like terms, I can say, 
will help uplift others. But as an ally, your duty and your goal for me as a Black trans woman is to uplift our own voices, not to speak for us in rooms of opportunity, but to let our own voices be heard. Does that make sense? Yeah. I will also say, if you are given an opportunity that you believe belongs to someone else, give it to the person that you believe it belongs to. Yeah. Thank you for that question. Thank you. Um, this kind of ties into that previous question. Um, what does healthy queer love look like to you all? I feel like healthy queer love to me starts off first with making sure that you're able to communicate your own needs. You're able to communicate what you want. And when you have that, you can kind of traverse through any space as long as that your needs are being met and the things that you need are being heard, you can traverse and grow through anywhere as long as you have the ability to communicate. And I don't feel like this is necessarily restricted to just queer spaces, this is to any space that you walk in within any room that you're in. It's your duty to take up that space, take up that mantle and let your voice be heard. Even if you feel like you don't have the loudest voice, that's fine. Not all of us do, and that's okay. We all grow at our own rates, but you should still be able to let your presence be known. Don't ever duck yourself down under. Don't ever try and put yourself under someone. Even I tell my kids this, yes, I'm mother, but that doesn't mean you don't have a voice. Yes, I'm mother, but that doesn't mean you have to speak under me. You have your own right to speak, say so, and do whatever you want in that manner, as long as it's not self-depreciating. -depre Yes. Um, <laughs> as long as it's not diminishing your own word, say what you need to say. And at the end of the day, communication is key. That's it. Communication is key. If you can communicate anything that you need, anything that you want, anything that you are missing, that is everything. And if it's if it's actually received, that is the next step. And so it's a give it, it's a yeah, give and receive moment. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yes, thank you for your responses. Definitely communication is key. Just want to reiterate that. Another question, what is the next step in your journey? That's it. Oh, what is the next step in your journey? Maybe I'm on a lot of journeys. Yeah. <laughs> That's a deep question with many roots and many answers and many. I like to say the way that I talk, I speak in tangents. This tree, this in the background of, of the presentation, that's how I talk. When I talk, there's one line and then that line sprouts into another, into another, into another, into another, to another, to another, to another. So you have a beautiful tree. That's how I talk. That's how I speak. But that's also how I move through life. I feel like with my journey, there's not just one set journey that I'm on. There's constantly, as an artist, as a Black woman of trans experience, there are many things that I'm going to go through and there are going to be many things that I pursue. And I feel like with this journey of life, you should constantly be evolving and finding new things and finding new pathways, new alleyways, new byways for you to be traversing through in order for you to grow and mature and find yourself as a person. What I feel like for me right now, what my journey's on through COVID-19 and this Delta variant is staying safe and making sure that I'm protected and I'm giving and receiving all the love that I need from my family. And next up to my journey, as well as you know, staying safe and being protected within the COVID environment we have now is, yeah, just keep growing. And as the opportunities come, um, take them, grow from them, learn from them, and step out of the comfort zone, and step out of my comfort zone when mm -hmm. I feel it's time to. All right, thank you. We have so many questions, like amazing questions on the chat. I'm like trying to like figure out like which one to ask. Um, let's see, I, I just saw one. So any advice you want to give for those that haven't find themselves yet? Hmm. 
I would say the best advice I can give for you is take some time, take some time of solitude for yourself. Look within yourself, find, and actually I think of yourself as a third person perspective, which means also looking at the good and looking at the bad. Um, because without doing that, um, you're never gonna be able to check yourself and be able to go up in the spots that you know that you probably should be addressing within yourself and taking accountability for. And so take accountability of your actions and the things that you definitely can grow from, but also make sure you cherish those things that you are already flour that you're already nurturing and allow that to flourish and grow better. Um, so I would say the best thing absolutely is just, you know, take some time for yourself. Because yes, it's great to talk to many people and try to get different perspectives, but sometimes the only perspective that you need is your own. Um, I would say for me, I happen to be blessed and cursed at this point with knowing who I was at a very early age. And I say cursed because a lot of people my age and a lot of people even older than me, I'm coming to re the realization that not everyone does know who they are. And there's a lot of times that you walk into spaces where these authority figures, you feel as if should have all the answers. And the reality is that they don't. Majority of them do not. And I feel like coming to terms with that is something that you should also keep in mind. And I think for me, the biggest thing that I can say is to never idolize anyone. Never put anyone on a higher pedestal. Never make assumptions and put people into these boxes of high places when you're not giving them room to grow. You're not giving them room to be themselves. You're not giving themselves room to do anything that's outside of the norm or the, the box or pedestal that Put them under and that can even be you know the same message can be said for yourself as a person if you don't know who you are yet give yourself that time to grow give yourself that patience to find the things that you do need for yourself just to tie into what father mufasa said is that you need to take time to step back and look at yourself from a third party perspective look into the things that make you happy look into the things that make you flourish the things that put a smile on your face effortlessly you need to be able to nurture that. And when you do, the person who you are becoming and who you are meant to be, it will come naturally to you just like that. Mm -hmm. You know, all human, we make mistakes. So make sure you allow that for the people that you look up to as well. Hey, thanks so much for that. Um, another question, uh, how much backlash did you receive when you came out? Oh, how much backlash did you receive when you came out? For me, baby, I lost everything. I lost my housing. I lost my family. I lost the respect of my loved ones. It honestly took me to have absolutely nothing. And this was being in my rock bottom to eventually realize that if these people aren't going to love me the way that I need and the way that I want to be nurtured, the only person who's going to do it and the only person who has the power to do it is yourself. And when you realize and you take back that power to say that I can be whole, I can be happy, I can be loved, you don't really need to look for anything or anyone else. And I'll say that before Zende came into my life, I was at a time period where I felt like, oh, I need a partner. I need to be loved. I need to find someone. Child going on Tinder all night, swipe, 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 swipe in. But one day I got to a point where I was just like, what's the point of me doing this, looking for someone to help love me when I can't love myself? And once I came to that realization that I need to give into myself and I need to take the time out for myself to go get my nails done, Go get my hair done. Let me give back into myself. And I feel like the moment I did, it was instantaneous. This one just fell right into my arms. And I will say for me, honestly, I this is where I'll speak as a, as a point of privilege. It's, I was lucky enough to still have um, a family that was not necessarily um, rejecting of my career identity. They did not quite understand it. Um, they didn't also necessarily take the time to actually try to necessarily understand it as much, but they never truly rejected it. 
And so um, I would say in that moment, that is where I say that I have a lot of privilege there. Um, and yeah, I honestly, that's really all I can really say on this. I, I really wish that, um, I really wish that I could, I could, I could like, you know, provide more insight on that, but it's just, it's, it's the privilege that I kind of came with. I'm sorry. They privilege, they didn't lose nothing. I, <laughs> Next question. Well, thank you for sharing. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't want to say it. Sorry. It's all good. You don't have to say anything. Um, this will be our last question. I apologize to everyone who asked questions. We couldn't go. We couldn't answer all of them. But our last question is, what brings you joy these days? I have a motto. I like to laugh every day. Once a day, every day, I need to laugh at something or I'ma just bite the dust. And that's just on period. I can't go a full day without laughter. That for me is something that's necessary to me, whether it's a meme, whether it's me laughing at myself, whether it's me looking at nature and saying, ooh, baby, that tree looks funny. And I start cracking up. You need to find something to be grateful for every day. And you need to find something every day that can give you not only a spirit of gratitude, but a spirit to say, I'm happy to be up this morning. I'm happy to see another day. I'm happy to be alive. And I feel like the, the next best feeling of joy is laughter, baby. And for me, it could be any and everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I would say for me, honestly, I find joy in the smaller things like, you know, petting my cat, you know, and watching her get dumbfounded by new things in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Um, and just, just the small things around that happen that just brings a smile to my face that I really can't like, like when it happens, I can't help but smile. And so like being able to spot, fall, find those small things that I find enjoyment in that also, that just allow me to smile and feel good within my day. Those are the things that make me, that bring a lot of joy to me, you know. Even if, even in the bad spots, you gotta be able to find joy anywhere you can. And that is most likely in the smaller things. Absolutely. All right. With, with that, we'll end our program for today. Thank you all so much. Um, for those who are all still here, please show love on the chat. Um, don't forget to do our feedback, feedback. Form at bit.ly slash the center or CCIE evaluation, um, it will, which will be posted on the chat. Amaya, um, what's going on tomorrow? Yes, so you have next up we do have an event with Ronnie Sanlo, which will be an event called Shiros, Heroes and Theros, a walk through LGBT history. So that'll be happening tomorrow from 11 a.m. to 12:30 p.m. And there'll be some information for that event in the Zoom chat as well. And then the following day we have um, additional events with LGBTQIA Week. So on Wednesday, we'll have the history of HIV and AIDS in Seattle, an AIDS memorial pathway. That'll be happening from 10 a.m. to 11.30 p.m. And also information to that Zoom webinar is on the screen. Then on Thursday, we'll be hosting an event with Senator Marco Lias, who will be giving us some info and walkthrough of Cure Politics, post-marriage equality. So that'll be happening from 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. And the info for that Zoom webinar is on there as well. And then to close out the week, we'll have a film called Huma Kima, which will be facilitated by Wina Fui and Robert Scribner that shows the story of trans women in Hawaii and preserving Hawaiian culture. That'll be shown from 3 p.m to 4 30 p.m and also the zoom webinar info is on the screen as well so with that i would like to close out today's event and thank you so much to everyone who attended today and also special shout out to the house of Manet's mother um Tinashe, and also father mufasa for joining in with us today and lastly um also being sure to fill out the feedback form for us so we know how to better improve our events in the future <laughs>